everyone has these defining moments in their lives. And, and mine just happened to be, how are you going to treat this? Are you a victim or are you a survivor? So. When we talk about adolescent and young adult cancers, we are referring specifically to the group of patients that are between ages 15 to age 39. This group of patients has sort of fallen through the cracks, not only from the medical standpoint of their treatment for cancer, but also from giving them the necessary support they need. There has been very little attention paid by, uh, by medical researchers and clinicians to this group as, as a distinct entity. A lot of attention to children with cancer cancer, a lot of attention to older people with cancer, but very little attention until recently to the young adult group, the kinds of cancer they have, the treatments they respond to, all these issues that are important. And the challenge, again, is the fact that the age group of adolescents and young adults with cancer um, spans a bit of the pediatric age range and a bit of the, the medical oncology age range. and so to define the best care providers for the disease that the patient has and um, you know the the unique biology of that as well as their unique psychosocial needs um, is is an issue with these patients also people don't think about cancer when an adolescent or a young adult comes to a doctor with symptoms they think about everything other than cancer so diagnosis is often delayed to have cancer at that time in your life is it presents tremendous challenges in an environment that already is very challenging. So in order to take care of these patients effectively, you've got to address the environment as well, not just the medical aspect. There's been a convergence of interest from the National Cancer Institute, the Lance Armstrong Foundation, the cooperative groups, as well as many advocacy organizations. And with all of these groups coming together, there's been an incredible awareness of the issues of adolescents and young adults, which is leading to a new journal for this group and specific research initiatives within this group. Some of the most important research questions are uh, which therapy uh, works best for the adolescent and young adult population, both in terms of maximizing survival rate and minimizing late effects. Some of the other most important research questions have to do with distinguishing what is the distinctive characteristics of a young adult with cancer. What is involved in developing a, a program, a comprehensive program for treating young adults with cancer? I think that is essential no matter what else we develop in research and other areas, we've got to have the right model of care. And I think that is being developed at a number of institutions. And we need to learn from the experiences of those institutions in order to go forward with other programs. We have to have models that can be replicated, not just in major cancer centers, but in the community as well. We need a better understanding of the biology of these cancers. Um, we also need better understanding of the epidemiology around these cancers, as well as a lot of the psychosocial needs and research. But, uh, but the biology, I think, is what's going to lead to, I think, increased survival rates um, for people affected by cancer in this age group. And, and the faster we can understand those biologic differences, the better we're able to respond with more targeted treatments. We need to develop clinical research that takes the biology that we develop, translates it into new trials that will help us treat these patients better, and also looks at the environmental issues in a research manner. Being able to more effectively target psychosocial interventions that meet the needs of, of that population and ensure that if they are diagnosed, they are not deprived of all of the resources that are available to help them deal with their, their disease. That includes access to insurance, financial resources, practical assistance. Um, you know, we know that this population tends to be underinsured as opposed to the general population. Uh, they tend to be just starting their career or in school and um, really at, at pivotal points in their lives. And so no one should have a cancer diagnosis um, affect their, the rest of their lives negatively, unnecessarily.